Hi. In this second video of a series, we're going to continue to explore building a SQL database application. Here's the index of all of the things we're going to learn. In the first video, we worked through creating our first database. In this video, we're going to start to write some queries using the SQL language. In the future, we're going to talk about the front end, connecting our database to that front end, doing some searches, inserting records, creating foreign keys, joining tables together, creating what's called UML diagrams, making compound queries or multiple queries in one step. We're going to delete items from the database. And then finally, at the very end of this course, we're talking about features that we didn't get to, but you could probably explore. So this whole series here is available, not only here where you're watching, but also on studycoding.org, which is my channel where I create applications. My name is Shad Sluter, and I welcome you to come to class with me, virtually even, where you can become a professional software developer. So this course that we're covering right now is focusing on databases, but as you can see from the selections on studycoding.org that you can learn C-sharp programming for websites or Java or Node.js and JavaScript and other languages. So many of my students have become professional software developers and have great jobs, and I'd like the same thing to happen for you. So come along and join us in class and plan your future. So just as a reminder where we're going with this application, this is the final product. And as you can see, we have a list of albums at the top of the uh, page, and then we have a list of music or tracks at the bottom, and then a YouTube player so that we can hear the music. So in the past video, we created the database that goes behind this top control, which is a grid. And we're going to work on some queries this video where we can select items based on what's in the database. So searching for specific titles, selecting specific columns of this table. And then eventually we're going to come and create this application that you see and display the data on the front end, you might call it, or on the form of the application. So let's go take a look at where we were and then we're going to get closer to the vision that you see here on the screen. So as a reminder, we built our application using this uh, tool here, MAMP, which includes MySQL as its database. So I've got the two little green dots here indicating that the application is running and the database is being served. Now I'm going to click this button here that says Open Start Page. So here is the start page. As you can see, the address is localhost MAMP. I'm going to the Tools menu and choosing My Admin. And I'm going to take a look at the database here. So music two is what we created in the last video. And so far we have an albums item. So you can see on the screen now that I have several items that I imported in the last video. So I have a bunch of albums from the Beatles. So I have the title, the artist, the year, the image name, and the description. Both of those items at the end were taken directly from Wikipedia. So in this video, we're going to practice doing some selections and then in the next, we're going to do some programming actually in the form. So let's go to the part that says SQL and we're going to learn how some SQL queries work. So as you can see, there is automatically some code written for us, which is very helpful. Let me zoom in a little bit so we can see very well on the video. There we go. So select star, it says from albums where one. So let's make this even simpler. I'm gonna take out the where collection and just say this statement, select star from albums and let's click go and see what that does. So what this is telling us is select everything that there is in the albums table. And you can see that the list here includes all of the items. Now we're going to do a little bit more sophisticated searches than that. So let's focus in on this last part where it says where. So where is uh, going to be a condition. So we can say uh, some name like ID, and then I'm gonna put in an equal sign and then specify a specific number. So let's try three. So I, I just happen to remember that the first album in my table is ID three. So if I click on go, we're going to see exactly one result because album three here is Abbey Road. So let's try a different search. So I'm going to say where ID equals something else. So I'm going to put in uh, 17. I believe 17 is one of my albums. So let's click go. And sure enough, it looks like Hard Day's Night in my collection is number 17. So that is one way to do a SQL statement. Now let's do another where we can have a condition to say something like, I want to look for where ID is anything greater than 10. 
and let's choose a go and this time you can see that I have two items I have 16 and 17 which are bigger than 10 uh, you can experiment with others let's try something like a less than sign so let's say if I say ID is uh, less than 10 and what comes out now so we've get ourselves uh, four of them so three four five six seven are the results here so you can see that the SQL statements are able to select items based on a condition all right so now we're going to do another query and this time I'm going to search in the title of the album so let's see if we can find anything that has the letter A in the album title so this will hopefully find things like Abbey Road so the way we do this is we put in the word uh, album title after the word uh, where so where album title now instead of an equal sign I'm using a like operator so like says we're going to match a partial match and so I want to match something that is like the letter A let's see if this does anything now before I click the go button I'm going to make sure that this box down here called retain query box has a check mark that will allow me to come back and modify this without retyping the entire mess so let's go ahead and choose go and I am disappointed the results down below says it returned an empty set so nothing like a so what is missing here is the ability to search for wildcards so I'm going to put in a percent sign before the a and a percent sign for the after which means find a somewhere in the middle of the word let's see if that does any better so I click go so let's look at the results down below and you can see that there are three results it says here Abbey Road Yellow Submarine and Hard Day's Night were all matched and so this here is a like statement that gives us a result so the percent sign and the like operator are both important now a couple other things that we're going to notice here is these back ticks so how do you type those if you're working in uh, your uh, application because we're going to be copying and pasting these uh, search queries into our Visual Studio application these are actually optional so I'm going to delete the back ticks they're only useful is if you need them for uh, holding a space in your uh, in your query so if I click go the query works just like it did before if I had something like album collection as my name for the uh, table I would have to put in those back ticks as you see it here but for right now we don't need them so I'm just going to back out to where I was before all right let's do another go just to make sure that it's still working okay so I have three albums now what if I only care about retrieving a certain pieces of these data so for instance if I wanted to know the album title and I cared about the year just those two for some reason that's what my application needed so instead of the star I would erase that and change it to something else so if I type in something like an A you're gonna see that there are suggestions here so album title is what I want to select I'm gonna put a comma and what was the other I wanted a year so I'm gonna put in the word year and those two column names show up from the results down here let's see if that works and I choose go and the results now indicate that I'm only getting two columns in my response so if I'm ignoring everything else in my database I can do specific searches using the column names let's say I want to rename these search results for some reason I can say album title as the word title and year as so let's make it up how about date of publish um, you can use any name you want really let's choose go and let's see what that does at the bottom so now you can see that the the titles of the results now are renamed so title and date of publish are the exact same column names it's just that I've renamed them that is something that people do frequently when they have to for some reason match up a uh, a property in their application to a column name in a database and so here is a couple of examples that we've done so let me summarize what all on the screen here of all of the queries that you just wrote so first of all we did just a standard query where we selected everything then we did a query where there is a greater than or a less than sign then we did a query with likes and we indicated that we had to have wildcard characters before and after a string if we want to get accurate results for the likes then we wanted to be able to select certain column names and so the column names are specified instead of the star so star gives you all columns in a table and you can specify just a few columns if you need to and ignore the rest and then finally we have some searches where we rename the column results where we say 
rename the title as title and the year as date of publish. So those are some of the things that you can do with SQL. Now there's a lot more things to do with the SQL searches, but I will leave those for another exercise. In the meantime, we're anxious to get this thing working in our application. So in the next video, we're going to create an app that will display the search results that we've done here and put them on a form in a Windows app. So let's get started with building that app next. If you would like to look at the full series of this thing, you can either subscribe to the channel that you're looking at now on YouTube, or you can see the more extensive version on studycoding.org, which is another website.